I begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land and pay my respects to their elders past and present. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Today is the day 31 of the Grand Australian Ride. I rode from Mataranka to Vurumungu. The ride date was 30th of May 2022. The time taken was 8 hours and 45 minutes. The weather was really hot. The distance I rode was 539 kilometers. The road was mainly straight and the terrain was bushy. Uh, I took three fuel stops, one at Dale Waters after I started. The second one was at Elliot and the third fuel stop was at Tenant Creek or uh, Vurumungu. That's where I stayed uh, for the night. Good morning. <clears throat> Today is uh, 30th of May and uh, 31st day of the tour. So we are nearly there. Um, and today uh, uh, it's around uh, 5.45 right now. Plan is to leave by 6 o'clock. All I need to do is finish my breakfast. I'm nearly packed and then go. Uh, now. Uh, today's ride is from uh, Mataranka where I'm over here right now. I came yesterday, I came in the afternoon and um, uh, from here I'm going to Vorumungu which is a uh, dry junction. Uh, from that point if you want to go to Alice Spring you go via Vorumungu to Tenants Creek and go down. So it's a big junction there. So that's where I'm headed today. Um, now about yesterday, after I came, I went for the, uh, the kitchen opened at 5.30, so I went there at 5.30, had dinner, I had pasta, they had pasta over there, that was the only vegetarian item they had, I guess they might have kept it for kids, <laughs> but anyways, they were alright, uh, they were good, uh, apart from that, everything else was meat, um, Anyways, so yeah, that was dinner. After dinner, uh, they didn't even have chips or uh, garlic bread or anything like that. But that's okay, the pasta was good. Um, then after dinner, I came back to the room because uh, I was feeling a bit, I wanted to rest out um, and rested. And then about 8.30, 8.45, I got up again and went back to the you know near the bistro because they had a show of you know like a what do you call it, jabuk a whipping show this guy is uh, proclaimed to be number one in australia uh, must be living somewhere around here so he has a show over here uh, it was pretty interesting i did not see the full show because i wanted to go back to sleep it's as you can see it's 5 47 and I woke up around 4 4 30 so I can you know for all the morning rituals um, so yeah and uh, but I did see a portion of it it was fun I have captured some video which you would have seen in the last video and uh, I have also uh, taken some photos which you would have seen you, you might have seen in Insta and Facebook but anyways uh, it was fun um, and it was something very different but very Aussie. Uh, in fact, I just realized that since I entered Northern Territory, there are only three places I've been. Catherine, that was the first day where I finished, then Darwin and Mataranka. So this is probably the first outpost that I've actually, or you know, first uh, outback uh, location that I've, um, I've visited. In Western Australia, I was in outback all the time but this is in NT this is the first time I'm in Outback and from here I'm going to Mata uh, Wormangu and I think uh, after Wormangu the next destination which is tomorrow would be in Queensland so <laughs> I would have crossed the state already but anyways um, this is it uh, that's update from last night and a brief one today now I'm going to finish my breakfast and I'm going to get going I'll quickly show you what the breakfast is. It's oats, like you've seen before. So, there's a lot of lack of furniture in this place. 
Uh, that's all. Coffee. So yeah, I'm going to finish that. The bike is nearly ready. I uh, just need to add the last bag and I'll be off. And I'll catch you on the road. Good to go. The time is six, eight minutes, eight minutes past six, six zero eight. It's really dark right now because the sun hasn't risen. But uh, that was the idea to start before sunrise. So let's get going. Om Ganpatai Namah. Shri Adya Sakti Mata Ki Jai. Krishna Kanaya Lal Ki Jai. Har Har Mahadev Har. So we got half a tank right now. Options are to fill up the tank before we leave. But it's too dark for that. So I guess I'll just, uh, uh, I would have at least 150 kilometers and if I have to, uh, if I run out before that then I'll go to this can so it will give me a reason to use that fuel as well as uh, take a break. So yeah, I think this is how we go out. not done any vlog which is in dark this is probably the first one <laughs> okay I think now we are on track someone's doing something out here oh. hello the man's gone on with his dog but this time anyways Hmm. It's a little uh, chilly right now. So as you can see there isn't much to see right now. So I'll uh, update when there is a sunrise or something interesting happens on the road. Like you know if I see an animal pop 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 doing and I'll just stop and show it to you. Uh, there is a possibility I might see kangaroos because I have seen a lot of you know dead kangaroos in the past like since I left Melbourne I've seen dead kangaroos everywhere so I would say there are plenty of kangaroos because I've seen so many dead ones but like I had mentioned before because I don't travel during dusk and dawn I have not captured any of them on the camera so uh, let's see because I'm I mean seeing animal on the road is not actually a good thing because that means that there is a chance of an incident which I don't want but if I can I'm going to uh, maintain a low speed this morning so uh, if I find something interesting I'll definitely capture we are going towards Tenant Creek which is on the left uh, but before we get started, I just will put on my gloves. Um, Tenant Creek is a, is a popular sp sp uh, stop. Uh, even, you know, when they do what I'm doing is around Australia, which is a, the big one. Um, even when you do rides like uh, uh, Melbourne to Darwin or Adelaide to Darwin, uh, which is uh, passing through the center of Australia and um, um, south to north or north to south whichever way you prefer so when you do that uh, there are a few key uh, you know it's a predefined route this is not a that predefined route but the other one is uh, because this route is like 60 days and you have to modify depending on your situations like day after tomorrow I was supposed to ride 600 kilometers and reach Mount Isa but now uh, Mount Isa is booked out because of uh, some uh, mining you know there are some mines around that area and uh, due to some issues in one of the mines or a couple of mines I don't know all the miners have been moved to the towns so all the motels and hotel rooms are booked so because of that now i have to skip that town and ride another 100 plus kilometers and stay there overnight which will but due to which 
I'll end up riding 780 kilometers in one day. Now these situations happen, but if you are in riding north to south, south to north, it's a pretty straightforward easy route. Tenants Creek is uh, one of the uh, stop points. Mataranka is one of the stop points. Catherine and Darwin, of course, and a few points, places in between too. So we are on the uh, A1 right now. <coughs> Now, after a while, A1 will split. One side will go to Mekatha and the other will become a national route as well, but a different route. I'm not going to go to Mekatha. The reason being from uh, Bolungi or something, uh, there's another name. After Mekatha, all the way up to uh, uh, Northentum, and uh, that whole route is 4x4 uh, four four off-road which is not a problem for this bike but then it's very sandy and there are a lot of over river crossings if it was a bit of river crossing I can take care of it no problem but there are quite a lot of them um, problem for me I'm alone um, there are uh, the bike has limited capabilities, so I can't take the risk. That's why I'm just going to take an alternative route, which will uh, mean I'll have to ride another 300 kilometers extra, but that's fine. Um, but the route that I'm going to take is uh, a popular uh, route for lepers. Whoever do, uh, does, you know, like the lap of Australia, this is the route they take. Anyway, so I'll update as I get closer to see the sunrise right there if you can see it it's that orange effect on the sky uh, I'm riding southwest so sunrise is on that side on my behind my left shoulder uh, just one quick point I wanted to make over here you would say why would you start so early because I need to cover like near close to 550 kilometers today uh, it's very hot during the day so if I start early I get an opportunity to uh, ride in cooler environment and not in really hot scenarios people in Melbourne will say oh, why would you miss out nice and warm weather and I'm like nah mate it's not that it's too hot <laughs> it's just too hot the engine heat uh, penetrates you know I'm wearing riding calm, uh, gear but still uh, I have to open the vents now open the vents allow me cold air like air from outside but at the same time it also lets in some engine hot engine air as well so not a very pretty sight so not a, not the best ride I would say um, because of that so and I have to stop too frequently but in the morning this is really nice weather and I'm really enjoying it at the same time I can ride in the cold like a nice chill environment and also the first sec this route is such today and tomorrow that there are very few things on the way it's just like this so I wouldn't really miss anything major our horses running away there were so many horses over here they are uh, they're gone as soon as I stopped they sort of started running away from me <laughs> but as you can see this beautiful uh, view right here uh, this is the advantage of riding early, isn't it? So, yep. You see, those birds are feeding on the dead kangaroo. Look at that. Such a huge bird. A poor thing. That sight I have seen 
so many times like maybe a hundred times birds feeding on the kangaroo i just drive past and they fly away as i get drive past this time i thought i'll slow down and see if i can capture them on the camera but you saw the bird was massive and that bird is what i've seen throughout this region pilbara uh, uh, kimberley region as well in pilbara there aren't many kangaroos there you don't see dead kangaroos there because there aren't many but around uh, this area a uh, lot of them a lot lot of them of larima uh, looks like deserted you know completely look at that uh, that on my right is a hotel was a hotel at the back a few vehicles over there but apart from that it's all empty the next one up is uh, dali waters 88 kilometers i think hopefully i'll find fuel there cuz i'm starting to run low on fuel that's 88 kilometers from here and uh, i have uh, about 88 kilometers of fuel left that's it so let's see hopefully hopefully we should be fine Oh wait a second there's something else here Uh highway in 91 km la <laughs> There's even further than that okay No problem I've got the cans I'll probably use them now Must be uh Okay I must be about 10 5 to 10 km away from the petrol stop and i think i've run out not a problem i've got fuel but uh very close it started jerking so i thought you know before it stops and i have to stop just about anywhere where i can't stand properly i might as well make my choice and so i stopped over here i'm going to add some of this fuel not entirely because this is old fuel so and um, then when we get to dale waters i'll fuel up the tank fill up the tank fully I've added some fuel but uh, what was that bloody hell I've added some fuel uh not em emptied the whole can uh just added enough to take me through to uh, uh the next stop the next fuel stop this should last i guess uh 
15 20 kilometers at least that because that is all fueled so i didn't want to use it completely into the you know so i'm not going to fill up again anyways i'll update when i'm there Dale is water which is on the right hand side just gone past but I'm not going that direction so the fuel I need I can get it from a highway in which is on the highway if I went to Dale waters it would be two kilometers inside and then I get the fuel but I can go two kilometers this way and get the fuel on the highway itself so that's what I'm going to do and then from there I can continue towards uh, Tenants Creek. I'm not going to Tenants Creek, I'm going towards Tenants Creek. So my destination for the day um, is before Tenants Creek. So I can still follow the signs for Tenants Creek. This is an important junction from this way this point Borola is on the left hand side there so my original plan was to go via Borola to uh, uh, via Borola to uh, uh, you know to Keynes uh, but like I had mentioned earlier it was off-road mostly and a lot of water crossings and everything so right now it looks like there is a proper road but after MacArthur the, it's basically uh, unsealed so that's why I decided not to go that way A1 goes that way but I am going to follow this route now and oh there is a plane <laughs> this is an interesting place please I'll uh, I'll obviously capture the video of the plane and everything in a minute but I'm going to fuel up over here and after I fuel up I'll uh, capture uh, show what it cost me and everything yeah all right shop and uh, a coffee now look at that <laughs> plane it's a crashed up plane I'll just show you from inside you see all the wires and stuff are still in still there anyways so people have put the stickers on I'll put Grand Australian ride and save soil sticker on it so spreading awareness <laughs> Anyway, so there you go. That's a plane in middle of nowhere. And yeah, fueled up. Um, <coughs> so the cost of the fuel. Uh, yep, it was twenty seven point ninety four dollars. I had put in thirteen point forty four liters. The cost of the fuel was 207.9 per liter I uh, put in this one. So that's more than $2. In a location like this, I guess you wouldn't expect anything else, any less. So there you go. Now finished at Dale Waters Highway Inn. That way is A1, but we are going to go off A1 now this is a987 I think that's the sign over there so yeah we are headed towards Tens Creek I've already covered 170 kilometers 
it pretty much went non-stop except for the fact that I had to stop to fuel up a little bit on the way yeah Dunmera is the next stop, uh, stop here but A87 and 390-87 was uh, the distance to Tenants Creek but I'm going to go before Tenants Creek so I'm guessing it would be around uh, 370 or something remaining and it's nine o'clock now so not bad uh, I should hopefully be at uh, the location by uh, I believe about uh, latest uh, three so 12 and two like one or two two o'clock maybe I'll take it easy don't need to rush anymore and I've also got some good news uh, Devangi uh, my wife she called to say that she has managed to secure a room in Mount Isa so tomorrow I was a little nervous because I had to ride 780 kilometers to uh, a, a town after Mount Isa because there were no rooms there but turns out that we she has managed to secure a room which means that I only have to ride 600 plus kilometers uh, 600 something but still it's the biggest ride of the day anyways it's more than 600 kilometers but uh, the good thing is um, it's not pushing 800 <laughs> so not bad anyways uh, we are on our way now so that's the update so far uh, now I'll give you update uh, if anything comes on the way but from what I know uh, this is one of the most boring routes of uh, boring patch of the whole route but in saying so I wouldn't really rely on that because I have been surprised with so many good things on the way so I'm looking forward to the day I don't know what has happened to Masti Generally, when, I cruise, when I'm cruising, the speed is around 100, it stays at 100 and the bike is very stable. I don't know, today it's constantly pushing itself to 110. You see that 110? I don't know if you can see it. That is where it's cruising at today. I have no idea why, it's just slipping into 110, it's going faster than 100. Um, Maybe the engine is roused now that it's running more smoothly. I'm at around 11 and a half thousand kilometers on the odometer. But uh, Royal Enfield Himalayan in front of you riding at 110 kilometers cruising speed at 11 and a half thousand kilometers odometer really. Now I talked about random cars, look at that one. I talked about random cars earlier, that there are random cars parked or vandalized one side of the road. You just saw one. Um, most cases the cars are burnt out completely. But this one was in a much better state. I don't know, it's strange. I've seen this throughout Northern Territory so far. There was another guy doing a bi doing it on bicycle. There was another one that I saw earlier today as well. So today itself, I saw two people on a bicycle on this route. I don't know if they're doing the full lap or if they're doing a certain portion. I don't know, but I but that's definitely a second one today. Maybe it's getting popular now. I know here. Yeah? Uh, if you're wondering what's on either side of this road, I've been riding for like, you know, I don't know, two, three hundred kilometers now. Um, so just so that you know, on my either sides are cattle station. Like Muranji station is this one on the right. Now, that station maybe starts over here or ends over here, I don't know. But if it starts over here, 
to go on for uh, a, I don't know maybe 10 20 30 50 kilometers on the right that's the station sometimes even bigger depending on the station and depth wise I don't know it's just huge huge these cattle stations are as big as countries literally there are thousands and thousands of square meter no thousands and thousands of square kilometers square kilometers can't say thousands and thousands can't be bigger than the earth but you know what i mean is it's massive maybe you know like tens of hundreds of square kilometers but they are definitely bigger than countries that's how big they are they, someone said i heard from somewhere that there is a cattle station in australia which is bigger than germany so you can imagine the scale a cattle station in australia which is possibly bigger than germany germany is a very big country and one cattle station bigger than germany so that's the kind of size we are looking at and on this side as well there is cattle stations so since I left, uh, you could say Broome, the size and scale of the cattle station all the way to Darwin and further out uh, is just mind blowing. Uh, Northern Territory, Northern Territory, what I have found so far, uh, some mining, yes, but predominantly it's cattle stations over here that is what it's all about everywhere you see it's cattle station it's all cattle everywhere we are now entering a uh, barkley region uh, from what i can see in the photo there is a different kind of tree so it looks like vegetation and landscapes would change in this region i've already started seeing a lot of signs of it as I moved from Pilbara to Kimberley and uh, all different areas, everything changes. So, yeah, I'm expecting the same around here. So if you want to know, kind of get an idea on where I am right now. If this is Australia, I'm kind of somewhere in the center not in the center as in horizontally center somewhere but not vertically center vertically i am on the north i'm towards the north but horizontally i'm kind of somewhere in the center so darwin is kind of in the center kind of and i'm just left darwin so i'm you could say not exactly in the center but towards the center but on the right hand side now i've already crossed the center point because I'm going that way, towards the right, towards Keynes. So this is what it looks like, you know, around here. Everything is properly marked and stuff and there is traffic. But like uh, actual people living, oh, look at that, it's so changed now. All the grass and everything is gone. So all cattle station around here, as you can see on my right as well. Let me stop over there and see if they react. Oh, there's also a watering hole over here. Hmm. All the cows are looking at me as I stop. See, some of them have started getting up as well. All of them are staring. All of them. Look at that. And some of them already started moving. It's so funny the way they react. I don't know, should I call it funny or should I call it strange? Or, uh, but each of them uh, is looking at me. <laughs> Anyways, I'll get going now. I'm is kind of staring at me and thinking, what is this guy? It doesn't look like a car or a caravan. That's what I'm used to. Uh, 
Oh, so there are two different properties. There is a fence right in the middle and this side, the, this is a different property right now. Because the watering hole was on the other side. There were some cows which are staring at the water from this side. So yeah, now I'm in a different region. And as you can see, this is... Before, uh, earlier, the, station, the cattle stations were still there, but it wasn't visible. Now they are closer to the road, so you can see it. I mean, I could see the cows earlier as well, but they were at a distance. In Elliot, uh, since I started this morning, I have done uh, about 315 kilometers till now and uh, I still have about 220 kilometers approximately to go um, I just checked the motor uh, the road house that I'm staying at tonight is actually in Tenants Creek so Wormangu is what I marked but it's actually not Wormangu it's Tenant Creek so yeah so this is Elliot as you can see the house is around here over a tank I think there's fuel station over here as well so I'm hoping to fuel up maybe get a, a coffee as well health center school yeah police station see what we can find that's Elliot Hotel don't know if it's open or close looks close to me there's uh, Elliot Mechanical now open Puma Puma brand is everywhere when it comes to fuel around this area so Puma what's going on is it a queue or what check oh yeah there is a queue but the queue is for the big vehicles not for us all right so this Okay, so I'll fuel up and then I'll update what it's come to and all that, all of that. I could only fit in 7.51 liters. The cost was 225 per cents per liter, and I put in 16.9 uh, dollar worth of uh, fuel. Uh, but the tank is full now. Uh, I still need to take another break so after about 20 k's or so roughly I'll take a break for a bit of a stretching uh, actually I'm thinking maybe I'll take a break in 70 k's I've got 220 k's to go so break it down into two so two more breaks and I'll be in uh, Tenants Creek so there you go that's the plan now Elliot service center uh, looks like service center is basically all the social service government offices so that's Elliot Creek for you that's what the roads are like There's a sports ground on the other side. I'm seeing birds everywhere, like uh, peacock. Looks like female peacock. Is that it? Yeah, looks like that's it. Maybe there will be some houses scattered around, but uh, they predominantly covered the town.
Yeah, there is like a what industry, like a garage or something, factory, junkyard, some kind of a factory shade. Elliot staging camp. There's a lot to do with World War II history around here. That's Elliot staging camp uh, memorial over there. Uh, a lot of World War II history around here. Will you cook? A lot of Aboriginal people in this area. The lady who served me was Aboriginal. Now we are headed to Tennant's Creek. About 220 roughly. There is in 85 kilometers is another town, so maybe I can stop there for a cup of coffee. Actually, it's 250 k's from here, Tenants Creek. So that was Elliot uh, in Northern Territory. That's the town. And we are out of the town already. Uh, I'll update with uh, when something else comes up. Until then, another abandoned car. <coughs> uh, in a uh, couple of kilometers, there is Renner Springs. I'm going to stop over there for a coffee break. I did briefly stop uh, about 10 kilometers back. I wanted to just stretch my legs but I'm uh, definitely going to have a stop over here. Uh, have a coffee, just chill out a little bit. Because now uh, have maximum, I think 150 k's or something. So there isn't much distance remaining now. I'm just stopping here. There it is, that's a uh, pretty different locations. <laughs> desert in says desert in so there must be a desert around here or maybe this is the desert <laughs> that one is uh, also a petrol pump i guess diesel pump very different yeah look at that so I think you fill up the oh you pay by card or something oh there's another one there so you've got two options you can fill from here or you can fill from there up to you nice those people are standing and staring at something. So must be something over there. <laughs> Anyways, I'll just have a cup of coffee and then I'll update once I'm leaving from here. Until then, ciao. There is a variety of pumps over here. You can choose from. Just park here. Just finished with my coffee uh, and I met an interesting duo, Craig and Ralph. Ralph, 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 Ralph is uh, uh, the father, uh, must be I guess in 60s or 70s I guess and uh, Craig, his son, they were uh, riding in their uh, uh, Craig had recently bought a car, so he's just taking Ralph around on a tour. Now, when I met them, uh, they approached me and just, we had a quick uh, conversation. We had a conversation, and uh, Ralph said, "I have done Paris to Dhaka," and I'm like, "Really, man? You are, a, you know, like a you've done motorcycle on the next level." And Craig goes, 
I've done the OZ2 uh, lab for two years. So he had actually been riding around Australia for two years, what I'm doing in 50 days. But obviously when you do it for two years, you do more. You, uh, you got time to explore other things as well. Whereas I'm going pretty, I'm making it pretty brief. So I was like, wow, that's a long time. And he's like, yeah, I've been also working along the way and uh, doing the whole thing. And yeah, amazing thing. Um, he runs like a Facebook group for I think Suzuki 650 or something. Very nice people. Um, just had a brief encounter, but uh, yeah. Uh, you know, when you have, when you meet people like this, you just sort of have a short conversation and then you sort of refresh for the next leg of the journey. Uh, because this is a very monotonous road, it just goes straight. Um, it's supposed to be like a desert kind of an area. The, it's called the Desert Inn because if you look around, it's getting a, a little bit dry, I guess. Maybe that's why. Um, anyways, there's still uh, cattle stations on both sides and straight road. So I'll update and I find something interesting along the way. Mungu country. So basically, Warumungu, from what I understand, is uh, one of the, as I would see it, one of the tribes of the Aboriginal people of Australia around this region. So this would be their area, Warumungu area. Um, Warumungu is the place I was supposed to go tonight. Uh, apparently, Warumung I'm going to stay at uh, Tenants Creek, which is right next to Warumungo. So, yeah, that's apparently uh, that means I'm close to my destination now. From the signage, it looked like there are the people who walk a lot, do the walkabouts and stuff. I also saw some uh, signage about fracking in uh, the uh, the rest of the petrol station where I stopped, uh, the roadhouse where I stopped earlier. So this must also be an area where you find gas, LPG gas, and uh, fracking must be happening around here as well. So you not gas. Uh, I don't know how it works. They put pressure and then create gas so maybe there must be oil over here and there must be creating fracking something like that but I know one thing that fracking uh, isn't really good for the land so a lot of people are opposing it and it must be happening in the, around this area at the uh, three ways road house uh, this is our accommodation for tonight finally it's been a pretty long day I run out of fuel so I need to fuel up as well so I'm going to stop here first at the reception I'm just going to go in and uh, get the keys and then I'll update soon. I've then checked in. Even got my keys. It's uh, cabin number 15 so, and it's just around the corner. So let's just find it and unload the bike. Then I'll come back for the fuel. 
It's number fifteen, that's one to five. What says fourteen and fifteen? Perfect. So that's this one. All right, let's check it out. Hello. Oh, okay. Yep. No. No worries. Thank you. She said that the floor might be wet, but let's check it out. All right, so that's the. It's okay. Okay, that's the bed and fridge. A little shelf there. TV, toilet. I guess that's a shower there. And a little frame towels of course so that's the room this is the place and I'll uh, update once I go to fill up the fuel so I'll do it right now so I don't have to do it later and yeah okay no I'll just go and uh, fuel up and I'll show you how much it all comes up to and once I'm done with that, then I'll give you a brief on what happened today. So let's get started with the first thing first. Uh, 20 minutes. A few from that side. Okay. Alright, so I filled up. I filled up 12.02 liters. Uh, 248 cents per liter is the rate, which is very expensive. But yep, and 29.81 is the total cost. I'm going to go and pay for it now, and uh, I'll update you on the day a bit later now. Hello. <laughs> so today was day 31. I had uh, been riding from Mataranka. Uh, uh, where the thermal pools are up to um, Tenants Creek so I'm not in Tenants Creek I'm outside Tenants Creek um, this is three ways roadhouse so it's kind of like that so I came from here if I go towards the right it's Alice Spring but if I go straight I go towards Mount Isa so I'm doing a circle of Australia if I was going down if I was doing like eight or something on those lines, then I would probably be going down to Alice Springs. But I'm not doing that, I will be going straight. So that's why I'm staying at the junction. Today I had, uh, I had done about uh, uh, nearly close to 550 kilometers. Uh, it was really hot as usual. Um, now tomorrow uh, the plan is to go from here to uh, uh, Mount Isa, uh, I just need to find out if I have, if we have found accommodation in Mount Isa, if we haven't, then it is, it is going to be a nearly 800 kilometers ride tomorrow, because I'll have to go to the next town. So that's that. Uh, secondly, um, in terms of the ride today, it was fun, um, started really early at 6 o'clock, uh, dark at the start, obviously uh, in half an hour there was sunlight. Uh, the roads were fantastic. There was like all combination of straight and twists, you know, turns and up and down, hilly and everything. Uh, met some very, very interesting people today, including uh, a couple of guys, father and son duo. Father had 
done uh, Paris Dakar and the son had done the loop that I'm doing right now but uh, over a period of two years so we'll be stopping everywhere working and everything together so that's it so uh, he's also running a Facebook group with like 18,000 or members or something for uh, Suzuki 650 so yeah he was they were very keen we had a good conversation um, before that the uh, stop was where we there was a <laughs> like a uh, rundown plane not rundown but maybe must have had some kind of an accident or something I don't know but it was an actual plane um, and yeah there were people that put stickers on it so I thought might as well put save soil on it and I did uh, but yes that was that apart from that uh, very hot <laughs> quite tired right now because I started very early last night because I wanted to see the beeps show though so I went slept late so I'm a little tired right now I need I'll go and get something to eat I'll update you tomorrow on what I get to eat and obviously you can see it on insta as well and um, yeah, I'll call it a day now. Right now, the time is. Where's, what's the time? Yep. There it is. The time is 3:29. I think I came around 2:33 o'clock or so. That's when I arrived over here. So I took it easy because the engine was heating up as well. So I had to take many stops, and I was heating up as well. So I had to take many stops. If if we are going to Mount Isa tomorrow, then it will be very similar to today, except there will be a hundred odd kilometers more, which should be fine. Um, but yeah, so I'll call it a day. I'll uh, see you tomorrow. And until then, good night.